Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. Uh, we already covered assimilation, dissimilation, deletion, or elision, and uh, insertion or epenthesis. Assimilation was when two sounds became more similar to each other. Dissimilation is a process by which two sounds become less similar to each other. Deletion is when a sound is dropped, is removed, and insertion being the opposite of deletion is happening when a sound is added, which didn't originally exist. But metathesis is an interesting thing. This is, and the verb is metathesize. All right, let, let me start by giving an example. Th this word, ask. I asked him a simple question. So you would say, asked. But honestly, a lot of people say, Axed. Yeah. Okay, what is happening here? Okay, you have sound green and sound red switching places. Interesting. So when you have AB becoming BA, that's when metathesis is happening. Okay. That was, that was an example of metathesis. So, metathesis happens when two sounds switch places, i.e. when they are transposed. But, interestingly, metathesis can be contiguous between two adjacent sounds. This implies that it may also occur non-contiguously, that is, between two non-adjacent sounds. And you need also, you need to keep in mind that the two sounds involved may be vowels or consonants. So I already gave you an example of metathesis from English. So I'm going to give you an example of non-contiguous metathesis uh, that has resulted in diachronic change. It means change of one language to another. And in this case, we have the Latin word parabola, which in Spanish has become Palabra. You see, I know that para, parabola, and the of course the O has dropped. You see, so the O has been deleted, but so this word has undergone more than one phonological process. But for what is relevant to this discussion is that the ra and la have switched places, so. Parabola has become palabra or palabra. Palabra. Of course, we don't have any evidence of palabra. Maybe it was an intermediary phase, or maybe both processes happen at the same time, but it's not relevant. The relevant thing is that obviously you see pal, and then we have par, and then here you have la, here you have ra. So obviously they have swapped places. 
a similar thing has happened in Latin and Spanish in the change of word periculum, which has become peligro, danger. So we we are, we don't we're, we don't concern ourselves with the um changing to o. Here, we are not discussing that. We are just discussing the rela swapping places to lara. And of course, we have ka becoming ga, which is an example of voicing, right? Again, we are not discussing that. As far as metathesis is concerned, the two sounds have swapped places. So this is an instance of metathesis. And of course, I already introduced examples from English, synchronic variation. We, I introduced contiguous, ask, becoming ax, but I can introduce more examples from English. The word introduce, some people might say introduce, but so you see, the r and r, r has become er, introduce. So that's another example of metathesis. Another example of synchronic variation, or another, another example of variation uh, in English as a result of metathesis is the word asterisk. Of course, you can carefully pronounce it as asterisk, but you would often hear it as asterisk. So and the sounds k and s have switched places. And... Okay, so it's interesting, like the same phenomena ha is happening diachronically or synchronically across languages within the same languages or cross-linguistically between two different languages or between two different uh, varieties of the same language, like Latin, Spanish. Well, that would be different languages, but in the sense that they're historically continued. So now I have an example from Persian. The word kebrit, which is match, the thing that you start fire with, uh, might sometimes be pronounced as kerbit, especially by children or in certain sociolectal situations. And now that we mention children, in child speech in English, the word kitchen sometimes it's pronounced as chicken and this might happen this might even happen like some adults might sometimes make that mistake rarely it may also happen when uh, by people who have learned english as a second or foreign language but in child language it's a common thing and then the last but not least i have an example from lithuanian Preconsonantal fricative stop clusters meta metathesize to stop fricative. So fricative stop becomes stop fricative. For example, the morphem dresk has the past tense form dreske with the addition of a suffix e. Suffix e. So it takes the suffix e become dreske in the past tense. So not, no change here. You add e, dresk becomes dreske. But when, but the infinitive suffix is t. So it should be dresk t, but it becomes drex t. Thanks for your time and attention, and see you again soon.